Hey guys, in today's video, I want to explain to you why the cartwheel on the tennis serve is one of the most important technical elements that you need to possess. In fact, it is a fundamental element that should be present on all serves, whether you're hitting a flat slice or a kick serve. And what is a cartwheel? Well, if you aren't familiar with the term, a cartwheel is basically a move where you start like this and then you roll your body over your hands and your feet go up into the air. I'm not going to demonstrate one. And this is somewhat similar on a tennis serve. And a lot of recreational players have a mistake in their toss arm positioning that prevents them from executing a proper cartwheel. So here's what happens to a lot of players at the rec level. They toss the ball, but they don't continue to go up with the toss arm so that the shoulders are level. You can see that if I don't continue to go up with my toss arm, the left shoulder and the right shoulder are on the same level. What should happen is the following. You should toss the ball and then continue to go up with your toss arm so that the non-dominant shoulder goes above the dominant shoulder and you create a tilted position in your trophy phase. So when you achieve that tilt, naturally as you go up into the contact, you will cartwheel into the contact. This is something that will happen naturally. You are unlikely going to continue to stay up with your left side. If you allow the racket to go up towards the ball, naturally that non-dominant side is going to go down. Let me show you a couple more. I'm going to go up with my toss. Yeah. And then naturally as I go up towards the contact, I achieve a cartwheel. Now, a common question that I receive from my students is whether we should consciously pull down the toss arm after we have achieved the tilted position. This is something that you should definitely shouldn't do because you're going to time your cartwheel the wrong way. So if I consciously drag down my toss arm, I'm likely going to do this too fast, too early. I'm not going to time it right and it's going to destroy the so important vertical momentum. You don't need to manufacture this movement. This will naturally happen as you start to go up towards the ball. So the important thing for you to remember is that you need to create a tilt and then as you go up naturally that left side is going to go down. Now the tennis serve is one of the most unique movements in sports and it is not really like a cartwheel. I'm going to tell you why because when we do a cartwheel our upper body is straight but we don't want to serve like this because we're not going to be able to maximize our vertical momentum. So what should we do in the trophy phase of our serve? We should bend our knees, we should bend our body slightly forward and slightly backward if your body allows you to do this. So this is not how you would set up a cartwheel. So what this means is that the cartwheel is going to be intact as we serve but at the same time the body is also going to straighten. So let me show you what that looks like. As my body is straightening from this bent position, several things happen as a result of it. I am leaping off the ground because that vertical momentum is propelling me upwards. But not only that, because I'm doing a cartwheel simultaneously, you will see that my back foot is coming off the ground first. You take a look at any high level player, you will see that the back foot always comes off the ground first. So in other words, as the feet are leaving the ground, the front foot will leave the ground last. And this is a direct result of the cartwheel. It makes sense. As our body is going down on this side, the right side of the body will go up, which will naturally pull our back foot off the ground first. Now, should you pay attention to this? Absolutely not. This will happen naturally. There's absolutely no adjustment that you need to make. Like I said, what you need to do is load the body correctly and then just simply unload it. All these things that I just talked about will happen naturally. So again, you're going to have to put your body in a tilt. You're going to have to bend your knees, get on the toes, maybe bend your body forward and backward a little bit. And now here's the thing. You're going to have to drop your racket and unload your body simultaneously. Where a lot of you guys get in trouble is that you are dropping the racket in isolation and you have a racket drop leak. So you go in here first before unloading 
the body. Let me try to demonstrate that mistake again. So the racket drop is occurring in isolation and the body gets unloaded much later. So if you have a, a racket drop leak, in other words, if you are not unloading the body simultaneously with dropping the racket, you're gonna have a big problem. Your vertical momentum, in other words, your cartwheel and, and the straightening of the body will be affected negatively by you leaking your racket drop. Now you ever notice that the pros land inside the cord? But that is a direct result of the players throwing the ball in front of the baseline. If the players were indeed throwing the ball more behind the baseline, they would land behind the baseline. So naturally, when the ball is in front of the baseline, what will need to happen is that the body has to go forward in order to adjust to a toss that's more inside of the baseline. When this happens naturally, players land inside of the court. So let me demonstrate that. I'm gonna throw a ball more behind the baseline. You'll see here that I land with my non-dominant foot behind the baseline, and this one I'm gonna throw in front of the court. <laughs> you see here that I landed inside the baseline. So the thing that you have to keep in mind is that you have to lean your body slightly forward as that toss is inside of the baseline. This will naturally allow you to land inside that baseline and get that so important forward momentum. So now let me demonstrate to you what happens to the service motion if I don't have the cartwheel. So I'm gonna try to execute the forward momentum. I'm also gonna bend my knees and bend my body and try to go upwards without having the cartwheel. So let's see what happens to my serve if I do all those things. So let me try that again. There might be some muscle memory still there where I'm unable to do a serve wrong, but let me try it again. I'm gonna bend my knees. I'm gonna load my body optimally without having the cartwheel. So even there, I tried to minimize the cartwheel. I think a little bit of it was still there, but you can see how much less athletic this serve looks without the cartwheel. See that? And actually, I'm feeling a little bit of pain in my shoulder. Let me try it the correct way. I'm gonna tilt my shoulders. I'm gonna keep my toss arm up a little bit longer. You see, the athleticism is increased a lot by me cartwheeling into the serve. So now let me try to do a serve with the correct cartwheel, but without bending my knees and without going forward. And let's take a look at this one. So you can see that this serve wasn't perfect by any means, but it looked a lot more athletic than the one without the cartwheel. So this proves that the cartwheel in the serve is one of the most important power sources that you need to utilize. There's a tremendous amount of power stored in the reversal of the shoulder positions. When I reverse my shoulder positions, I'm able to accelerate upwards a lot more. There's a lot more range of motion compared to a serve that doesn't have a cartwheel, which goes to show you that possessing the cartwheel is one of the most important fundamental elements that you need to learn on the tennis serve.